Good evening. I wrap Steve with your financial market wrap up, and this wrap up is for Wednesday, the second of March, two thousand twenty-two. Now tomorrow is an important day. It's when we have our live webinar. So if you want to attend, it's really simple to do so. First off, let me tell you what we do. We cover the questions you send me. It's not about a presentation on my part. You write me questions, or during the uh, the webinar, you're writing them in, and I'll do my best. But if you're asking me on spiders, ETFs, send them to me ahead of time. I have all the future charts set up, but I don't have all the spider ETFs set up. So if you're asking me to do those, ask it then. How do you register if you didn't get my invite? It's pretty simple. You take your cursor, you move it up here, you'll see an icon come on. Now, this starts at 12.15 p.m. Central Time. I will open it up. That's just to get you in and let you get situated. It fills fast. There's a limited amount of seats. You may find that you can't get in. That's your problem. Get in after you register and get in there. It's that simple. The second thing, at 12.30 I begin. I end 20 minutes later. Could I be a minute after that? Yes, but I'm not going to be 15 minutes after that. Give yourself a 20-minute block. That's it. If you have questions, you can call my staff. There's no link on the website, so that is where you're going to go to work with this. So in the markets today, I think this was a selling rally today, but I could be very wrong. I was looking for a, a reversal rally, and I, I told my subscribers that. And I think that today was the day that uh, the pros hit the S&P, especially with sales on this hard rally. We'll see if I'm right or wrong. I get wrong a lot, as you know. On the energies, uh, I, I was just on Sky Business no more than, what, three hours ago, two hours ago. And I, I was talking about the backwardation in the market where the front contracts are worth so much more, $12, $13, than if you go back three months. And the reason is the market realizes that these high prices you're going to get balking at. The reason they're high is the war. The reason they're high is there's a war premium built in in case, in case Russia's oil and gas gets caught, cut off. It hasn't. OPEC met today. They're going with a uh, 400,000 barrel increase. Mexico brought up what's going on in Russia, and nobody paid attention to their question even. They got right over it. So, you know, OPEC is, is I, I'm going to repeat it, they are America's enemy. If you don't get that, there is something wrong with you. They are out there sucking your money out of this market instead of us doing it. And one of you did write brilliantly. I want to, absolutely, you're right. America's production is going up every month, and soon we will be where, under President Trump, the numbers were. But it's not from big oil, and it's not in the, the way that can make it even bigger. It is from the independent producers, and I've been telling you that for six months, that they would come online and do that. The Biden administration has to change the rules of the game. They have to allow oil in from Keystone, they have to open up the fields again, and they have to change the tax laws on it. Why not? Let's assume we produce a lot and we're again a net exporter. Who's a better reliable exporter? America? Russia? Saudi Arabia, you tell me, which, which one of those countries? Take Mexico out of the equation. They're bright enough to say, you know something? In 2023, we're not exporting anymore. We're keeping our oil internally. We're going to protect us. Gee, how could they be smarter than America? We still are saying it's green. Guys, it's not green if you're paying your money to Russia, to OPEC, to produce that oil and you say, well, I'm not producing it, so it's green. I think we can be a better green, do it better than everybody. That's American technology, and that is not me waving the flag. It's the truth. Okay. So as we take a look at the markets, let's see where this might carry us, if I can get the charts to go. And they, they, want, they seem to want to give me a hard time here. Okay. Let's hope this is it. And if it isn't, ah, there it is. I got it working. These machines right here, you'll, you'll see the weather people have the same issue from time to time. I see nothing on this that says we have turned in this market at all. You know, Fed Chair Powell was out today. He agreed a quarter point hike. He is behind. He did not close the door on a half point hike. 
He is concerned that we're getting wage pressure. It's not abating. He definitely thinks that the Ukrainian situation is impacting inflation. But I think he realizes that just slamming the brake on and throwing interest rates on, you could hurt the American economy. He said as much. He's going to be on again tomorrow. It's a two-day deal in front of Congress. He'll clean up what isn't clean today. And tomorrow we'll see other people from Congress asking questions. But I didn't see anything bullish in that. When you take a look at a daily bar chart, I think you can make your arguments lower highs. You've got a rally. Is the market going to pop through here? Is it going to turn back down? That is exactly the question. Flip your coin. Tell me which one. When I look at the chart, this rally, it's stalling. I wonder why. Oh, I think I get it. Look at the 18-day average of closes. In my full charting course on our website, it's under education at www.irapstein.com. What do I teach? I teach that when markets are above these numbers, they'll often fall to an 18-day uh, average. Play with it until it determines what next. Get a big break, you rally there. In a bull market, which you had, you'll often fall back and try to determine what to do. Markets often stop at that number. Now, prior to the end of last year, Every break that we were getting was short-lived and stopping at the 18-day average. We then rolled to the other side. You can see how this transition, this is the whole transition. So until that game changes, why would I change? Having recognized that that is exactly the play, I think the pros are going short right here. Stops over that high. What are they looking for? Why not the lower Bollinger Band until it's proven that that's not the game? So I see resistance at the 18 to the 200-day average. And if the market takes out right here this high, my thinking is wrong. And I will say to my traders, okay, I'm wrong at over 44.85. But right now, a hard break into the 42, 20 and a half zone. That's where I think the pros will be covering what they probably sold today. Um, as we look at the slow stochastics, they're not oversold. They've come up out of an oversold territory, so they're okay there. In the NASDAQ, this is what you call a contra-trend rally. It's when you get the pattern of higher lows, higher highs, but you're underneath the 18-day average of closes. Think of a magnet. It's sucking the market back from being under the Bollinger Band, and it's saying, okay, if you are going to get a contra-trend rally, the objective's the 18-day average, and let's see what you can do when you hit that. Do you think I'm wrong in that analysis? Not so far. Now, can you turn bullish here? Like that. Get over 143.2750 and close over 142.82. Yes, there's that spread there. And I think the market turns friendly again, giving me a target of up here with the stop under the current low. But you got to make that happen tomorrow. In the Dow, I see nothing. This market's got a higher high, lower and low, none of those patterns. In the uh, Russell, I have told traders that I think that they should put their hands in their pocket when looking at the Russell. It's caught in this total sideways action, and you'll probably get churned trying to trade it in that. In the VIX cash, how often do you stay over an upper bowl in Japan? 5% of the time. So I know you all want to buy it when that's happening because it's going to the moon. Sucker play, sucker play. But I do recognize that each time we've hit that, unlike in past times, we're not returning to the 18-day average of closes. Why? Let me think this through. Oh, there's a Ukrainian war. And the risk from that is keeping that from happening. You recognize that. You keep your rules and you have another set of bylaws. And you go, if the world event has changed, it may change what normally happens and you recognize that. You've got to learn to write these things down. I no longer do because I've done this 53 years and I have a pretty good feeling. But when I create courses, which I'm doing right now on outside days, I write down everything about that. And I go back, I record, and I realize, oh, there's another thing, and I go back, fix that, and I do another recording. By the time I finish the course, just the way at the end of this, you'll see in my enhanced Bollinger Band course, I've got everything in there I can think of. I won't release the course unless I do. 
Same thing with what's coming up for you in the next one. But if you don't learn Bollinger Bands, trade like this. Be You lost your arm. I'll, I'll do it this way. I'm, oh, I, I, I don't care that that's resistance. It's going to the moon. Sure it is. In the T-bond market, what did we say just as we got up here two days ago? As the market got up here, I said, watch out. Overbought into big resistance of the Bollinger Band in this number. You rarely stay over those numbers. Could you? Of course you could. Do you do it typically? Absolutely not. Which side do I want to be on? The high percentage side. And there you go. So the money was taken out of the market up there, and I think traders are just sort of drifting right now. They have a lower low, higher high, and I think they're looking for what to do in that. In the June 10-year note, you have a lower low, higher high. My gosh, here you come. The first resistance should be the upper band. That's where I think the pros are going to come out. This is the gravy trade. If you get it there, if you play for that, it's not the best move you can do. It did it instantly. Instant satisfaction. It is wonderful when you're a chartist. Instant is the greatest thing of all. I, I Example, today, I had a hog trade. I haven't traded hogs in I don't know how long. That does not mean that I was going to be right. I had a recommendation from my subscribers. I could not believe that within 30 points we caught the low and got out near the high of the move. I was not counting on a day trade, but it was 250 points. It's a big trade. Luck opportunity, everything fit in. Being at the right place, doing the right thing at the right time, and having your stop and saying, I'm willing to take that risk in the market. Why am I trading hogs was the other thing, and I was going through it last night as I put out the recommendation where the whole world is looking at grain prices, the whole world's looking at Ukraine and all these financial markets, yet I'm looking at the setup and I'm going, I read rings every bell. It did. Yay for my traders. And, you know, that's what they get. These are the full research people that, that buy my full subscriptions. And paid for a lot of, it paid for a couple of years of your subscription. 250 points. Um, in the dollar, and by the way, you're still half long. In the dollar index, market moving up. Okay. Do you ever buy a ball in Japan? Never. Are you overbought? Yep. Are you trying to embed? No. So I'll let the next guy own the dollar index. They can tell me all the bullish things that are going to happen because of Ukraine and uh, Russia threatening now. Us again, uh, Mr. Lavrov, threatened again a nuclear war. I don't know if you read it. It's in my newsletter tonight when I send it to my people that they'll be held to pay. Uh, it'll be a nuclear event. Ukraine wants nuclear weapons from the West. Have any of you heard that Ukraine wants nuclear weapons? Have, have you heard the Zelensky saying, send me your nuclear weapons? They have them. They have the technology. They certainly have the technology. Russia, in its wisdom, put nuclear weapons in the country that is today Ukraine, right? They got them all back as well. Does that mean the people that worked on them don't know about it? Well, that would be pretty stupid. But it's a long way to go from, I, there are people there that worked on it, and Chernobyl is there too, by the way, um, and to saying, oh, the West is giving them and they're going to launch them at us. These are nuts people. Lavrov is, is, Lavrov is as crazy as Putin. These men are on a drug that none of us want to take. In the euro currency, lower highs, lower lows, riding the market down, as you can see, getting into oversold territory. Don't know that I'd want to keep pushing it, but if it drifts, why not the 110 level? I've been mentioning that for about three days now. There's nothing bullish in the market. If it embeds, I'll be all over it. But my work, just like I was talking before, having been a pilot and a driver in cars, and never good at either of them. I swear to you, the worst... If I was in the air, you wanted your plane to be out of the air. But to make a long story short, you learn the basics and you don't take off without fueling your tanks. You don't take off with checking your ailerons, everything that's on the airplane. Well, you don't make a trade when you see that the market's already oversold. That's all I'm saying. It doesn't mean it can't go lower. It's not worthy of me putting new money to risk for my recommendations. 
in the British pound. Higher, high, lower, low. I don't see a trend out of that. Bitcoin. As I told you, I think that the smart money understands that money around Ukraine, Russia, it's an easy place to put money and able to do things with it. You can't get money out of an ATM in Ukraine. It's gone. They're, they're empty. You can't go to your bank and say, would you open your doors? I, I need to get uh, uh, these, uh, these euros, whatever their currency is going to be. And they don't use a euro if you've ever seen a pretty currency. By the way, my wife has put around our house, and we are not Ukrainians, blue, outside, blue and yellow lights in support of the people. I was looking at it tonight and applauding her. Uh, when you look at Brent versus WTI crude, up and away to 659, okay. In the Brent, up and away. But how do you buy over that number? You're not embedded. Guess what? You don't catch it, you don't catch it, let somebody else own it at that point. WTI crude. Overbought, lower low, higher high. We'll see what the market offers. Heating oil, overbought, still a very big bull trend. Where would you put a stop? Back under here and you're going to buy the market? That's a 70 cent risk. You do realize how much money you're talking on a 70 cent risk. Uh, I, I, you would take a gun to your head if you, you lose that kind of money, okay? It just isn't worth it. Natural gas. Okay, we held what I said. We went, I, to my surprise, we went back up to the Bollinger Band, and that's what I figure. I think the market's just sort of caught in this right now. So as you put it all together, you're trying to come up with game plans, at least I am for my traders. Not every trade will work. Come on, nobody walks on water. But you pick your shots. I've swung over, as many of you know now, to the uh, minis. I'm going to get rid of these symbols. They'll all be the micro mini uh, stock indices for you. This is the weekly ones that I'm looking at and that's the reason that you're there. But if you want to learn more about Bollinger Bands, remember here's an ad on that and if you want to attend the webinar tomorrow, there's still time to register. You take your cursor, you pick it up here and when you push it there you'll see the icon, fill out the form and if you have questions for me you'll see my email in the form. Once you get your registration you get a password and user ID write me and tell me what you want me to cover. The cutoff time for me is 11.30 in the morning. After that, you can write me to your blue in the face. I'm too busy. I'm not going to be able to put those specific parts in. I'm Ira. You have a good day. Welcome. I'm Ira Epstein, and I'm here to talk about my enhanced Bollinger Band course. Now, many of you have taken my regular charting course, and if not, you might think you know something about Bollinger Bands. As you know, Bollinger Bands are an algorithm designed to keep the market trading within it 95% of the time and on a chart it will offer on the top part resistance on the bottom support and the idea is the market will travel within them. We know that sometimes it latches onto that band goes up or goes down. Well how do you play with that? Can you pyramid the positions off that type of thinking? Well, I've applied all three of these into 13 different videos that teach you my concept of it. And from that concept, you're able to work with weekly charts and or daily charts. The 13 videos, each about seven minutes long. The idea here is not to put you in school forever, but to teach. Now, if you haven't tried my complete futures research, I throw that in as well. Whether you've tried this or not, I think it's worth taking a look at. I think you're going to learn something from there. That research, by the way, covers twice daily market updates for you and access to what I call window envelope numbers, which I think are very important when looking at these Bollinger Bands. The next part is a trial to our charting software so you can make your charts look the same way that mine do. It's that simple. Where do you go with it and how do you get all this? It's simple. You go to our website, www.iraepstein.com. If you go to the word education, everything you need is answered there. You can also call my staff. They'll be happy to help you get set up. I'm Ira Epstein on the road to your education.